Good afternoon. Today is the 17th of August and this is the British Motor Show at Farnborough. I do apologise in advance for the wind noise, for incorrect information if I fall over, if I make a terrible hash of it. I'm afraid it's just the way it goes on this channel. So we're in the classic car area here. We are skipping over certain bits like the army kind of stand there and um, you know some of the more modern stuff the supercar palette we're avoiding entirely because i like to see classics and some of modern cars well we've seen some of those too but uh you know i think most of you on this channel want to see more of the classics and we're going to see them on this classics world stand for a start 1965 mgb from a beach hill garage which is actually quite close to here it's near reading classic sort of look of these with uh, the um like a track on the back and the sort of more um, kind of 60s look to the interior as opposed to the later ones. 2000 and 1 to 2 Jaguar XJR the V8 engine, so X308, uh, cream leather interior in this one with uh, bits of wood but not as much wood I think as some of the others, certainly less chrome on the outside. Um, we're looking for a beige leather interior views, but that will be a nice start, won't it? So, supercharged. Do you have an information sheet on here to give me anything else I need to know? Uh, oh, it's got an upgraded supercharger, 407 horsepower. Excellent. So, uh, Morris van, based on the old A55 Austin Cambridge. These were made until, I think, 1973, but the A55 Mark 1s were discontinued in 1959, I think, in favour of the A55 Mark II with the Farina Cambridges, and they badged them as both Austin and Morris, rather like the uh, Morris Minor sort of O-type vans, or eight or six hundred weight, uh, six hundred weight vans. We never ever hear my name, but people refer to Minor vans. Um, I don't know what you call this. Um, originally Austin, but obviously. Um, this one's badge to Morris, so that's a 70, 71. Triumph Stag, uh, Mark 1. This has a Ford V6. A lot of these from the original engines changed now. You can buy a Stag for just over £5,000. As you can see, it's 2700 rolling restoration. Uh, call um, 07764673798. There you go, it's a more affordable way into stag ownership because the sort of ones in really nice condition can be in excess of £20,000 now. Um, right, this, be careful about this one now. This is not a uh, um, Mark II, I think it's a 340 this one. It's too late for a Mark II. Yeah, it's a 340. This is what the Jaguar actually made um, to sort of. Sort of uh, tied things over until the launch of um, the XJ in 1968. So very similar to um, to a Mark II but kind of made a bit a little bit cheaper. Still looks good though. I, I don't know if I prefer the heavier bumpers or these. Uh, the XJ 68, it's, it's an automatic that one. Wow, uh, it's got modified cars. Here we go. 1989 to 90 Ford Escort XR3i Cabrio with these enormous white wheels. Now the interior looks pretty standard, apart from that steering wheel, I think it was a Ford option back in the day, one of those. Uh, even the rear spoiler doesn't look too far from standard, but the other page and everything else, depends on what, what your taste is really, whether you like stuff like that. Um, BMW M1, I think this is actually, it's a first generation, sorry, sorry um, it's not an M1, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's based on the 1 series, I think they call this the 1M, sorry, not the M1, the 1M, that's it. I do apologise viewers, I always say sorry for the incorrect information at the beginning and the videos because that's just what happens. So Ford Prefect 100E 1957 with the side valve engine. This actually looks really straight. We saw a lot of side valve Fords um, at the show at Cranley over, over the um, over the wee weekend and this is a pretty nice example of one of those. Bentley Continental GT, do we have an information sheet viewers or do we not? Uh, I'm afraid not, but yeah, it's one of the earlier Continental GTs. Uh, Lamborghini, but I don't remember what actually that's called, that model. Um, I thought we were in Classics World. This modified world, that or something. 
um, Mac 1 Mustang current shape 2022 or 2023 plate can't be older than 2022 I wouldn't have thought oh gosh I love skier stingers views I have driven one of these and this color it was actually it was a standard one and it was the V6 turbo and they are well they're pretty good they are very very quick and they're lovely to drive actually these stingers uh, 2005 Honda Civic Type R EP3. Hello to uh, Rev Masters on YouTube and Ash underscore Rev Masters on Instagram. Then we've got uh, some 370Z. I think we just just got out of production actually. These. Uh, it's a 2014. It's for Nismo spec. Um, but not a lot of these around in this country. Apparently only about a hundred. That looks like a very fun car to drive. Another Triumph GT6, uh, based on a Spitfire. Um, they finished in 73. This is a 1973, so it's a very late one. I think, again, we've seen this over the weekend at one of the two shows we attended. Then a Morris Minor. It's got an early dash in it, so what year is this? It's Series 2. It's 1953, so this might even be with the early grill. Yeah, it's got the uh, sort of early type grill on it that one so the 803 uh, a series engine triumph herald is this even a 1200 or is this before that oh it is a 1200 it's a 1962 so it's a it's a early 1200 actually that that's very nice that that kind of thing is don't we um mini moog so see if this is austin or morris but it's austin steering wheel anyway uh, yeah, Austin Badge. Uh, this is a 1967 68 Citroen Ami 1 Mark IV Fiesta. What was the fastest Mark IV Fiesta available viewers? I can't remember at the moment. I think this will be a bit faster than standard. Uh, it's a 1990 2000 plate. Mini British Open Classic uh, 1992 93 on a K. Uh, Yes, absolutely. There we go. Did we see this? We can. So it's at 91. So why has it got a 92, 93 plate? If it's a 91. Maybe late registration or something. Uh, Audi TT. Is it a TTS or something? Or S line. Ooh, now this is nice. Better Continental GT. Mulliner with a beige leather interior with wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior views. That is the sort of thing that is most agreeable. Right, let's go over here and see some more classics. Yeah, I'm pleased to see a lot more classics than there were last time I came. That's uh, making me very happy. Corvette Stingray, uh, 1970-71. Vauxhall Viva HC two-door, uh, 19- 73 to 74 registration I have driven one of these and um, the body roll was absolutely unbelievable it was just a basic Viva I think this might be a basic Viva as well um, yeah uh, drum brakes all round and no servo assistance that was interesting um, this is an HB no, sorry HA it is HA it's a sort of base on a Bedford Beagle type thing um, but that's not the standard engine in that anymore at all not the not the old 1256 or anything like that, it's a uh, V8. I think you've seen this before somewhere, viewers. Those headlamps, I think, are off of Mark II Escort gear or something, aren't they? Um, yeah, what's that, an F6768? Another HC uh, Viva here. This looks more like a uh, sort of posh spec one than one I drove back in January. Yes, it's an SL. I wonder what engine that is. It's probably got the uh, 1256 in it, hasn't it? Uh, what's it, 70? 576. Supplied, of course, like all good quality used cars by Arthur Daly. Right, let's go over here and look at some uh, TVRs. Good Smith it's on a 60 plate. Wow. Uh, how? Uh, oh, right, okay. So it was made about 2005, 2006. Let's hold this sheet down. Uh, it's got the yeah, Speed 6 engine, 4 litre, 400 horsepower. Tuscan S Mark III, fantastic. So yeah, unregistered till 2010. That's why it's on that plate. 
and then we have a uh, T350T from 2002 to 3. I think actually if it's a P, it might have been registered by um, TVR themselves. Yes, it was. It's a pre-production car, but 2002 British National Motor Show launch car. Amazing. So it's original pre-production prototype. That is fantastic to see. Great. And then uh, I think we have a Chimera here. Ooh, a Chimera complete with a beige leather interior. Mm, very nice viewers. That's what we'd like to see, isn't it? Yeah, an early one, 92-93. Um, another Tuscan here. How on earth is this possible? It's a dark green with a beige leather interior. Well, uh, beige and green. That's very nice. I, nice to see that somebody's accommodated my taste, isn't it? Always nice to see that. Uh, what have we got here? Classic cars on the problems been down to Bournemouth. Uh, ooh, yeah, 2001 uh, Griffith 500 SE, so very late Griffith. I think 2001 was about the sort of end of production for the Griffiths. It's very nice. And then um, another one of these that kind of looks like that. T350T over there, but maybe it's got a different name. It's got an information sheet in it. Oh, yes, it's a Cigaris. Uh, what year is this one then? It's a 2006, it's right at the end. Very last year, TVR was actually making cars. And we've got another one here. Ooh, got another beige leather interior. Very, very swish. Look at all this carpet and things, and a red. And the red sort of bit in the centre, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's a Chimera, it's got a personal plate on it, that one. And then another Chimera 450 here. Oh, sorry, got wood, excellent. I think we'd find what the TVO wood somewhere, be this. And then uh, another really late one, it's got to be only a 2006, hasn't it? Even though it's a personal plate be what it is. Uh, yeah, it's Cigaris. Yeah, it had to be a 2006, hasn't it? Almost knocked on head by Union Jack. It's very shiny, that one, isn't it? Particularly shiny. Here's the Chimera with uh, ooh, another beige leather interior with wood. Very nice. I think we're sort of heading for the ideal specification for a TVR if I was going to have one. As of everything else, uh, would be uh, dark blue or dark green with a beige leather interior. So I do like a nice beige leather interior. Is this another Griffith or something, this one is? Yes, it is. It's a 4.3 V8 Griffith. Um, doesn't give the exact year, but sort of like uh, 1996, 1997, something like that. It's a 500. And then a very early. Is this a Grand Chira? No, no, sorry, it's a Vixen Series 3. 71. What engines have you got in it? Oh, it's a, a Crossflow uh, 1.6 Ford engine. And those are, I think, Mark II Cortina rear lights. Another Griffith. I think it was a Ford Escort Estate Mark IV rear lights. Ooh, dark green with a beige leather interior and wood. <sighs> Viewers. And he's got green bits in it. Mmm. <laughs> Yes, please. Yes, please of this one as well. Very, very nice. We are enjoying ourselves today, viewers. I must say, the TVR owners seem to have uh, created things that I get very excited about. Uh, There's a 2001. Oh, is this another interior? It's just a sort of more sort of olive interior, though. Not kind of beige one, but, you know, never mind. We haven't got time for a sit-in, though. Uh, although someone said very kindly that we can have one. Uh... So it's four litre speed six. 2001 Tuscan. I'm getting sort of swordfish vibes off this. You remember that film with John Travolta? Why on earth he was driving a British registered press plate TVR in America in the film? It was never explained. It's a very, very kind of bizarre sort of tie up that as far as I'm concerned, but never mind. All the viewers, some Polish classics. Marluk here. Uh, Fiat 126. This will be with the uh, 
be the water-cooled engine, this one. It's a very late one, actually. It's a 1998 to 1999 registration. Fantastic. And then we've got a Serena. Also quite low. Finished in 83. This is sort of 79 to 80, uh, this one. Looks like a sort of iconic car of, uh, of Poland. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, made by a company called uh, FSM. I think later we'll have so. This is a, oh gosh, I never know how to say it. Um, it's like a, a Vosovska or something like that. It's, um, it's a big kind of a saloon from the early 70s, 71, 72 registration. Then we've got um, an FSO 125, I think they call these, or Polsky Fiat at the time. Yeah, Polsky Fiat, this one. Uh, 125P, I think they were named. They were kind of based on the old Fiat 125 from the 60s and 70s, but you know, with um, some modifications. They lasted for a really long time. I think they kept one out of production these in 1991. But uh, yeah, you know, they did sell these over here as well, actually. And then we've got the pickup version of this. It's a very long bed, isn't it? You can fit a lot of things in there. And it's right hand drives. It's a UK market one then. Yeah, it probably is. Uh, what's that, 1989 to 90? And then we've got a Polonez. Excellent. What a delight to see stuff like this. It's such rare stuff at a show like this. Um, I don't open the door or things because that's not what you do. But I have done a little sort of look inside a Polonaise uh, a while ago. That is for 1.5C model from 1984 to 85. Normally they have to skip a lot of uh, the AA fleet because they're powered by a fuel that we can't mention. Thank you, Mayor of London, and your ultra low emission zone expansion. But this is a. High end, I think it was a Nexo, and it's um, an AA <laughs> patrol vehicle. That's pretty good, isn't it? And we'll go it's up here and um, past the things I don't think we can talk about, including the Voxel Brava. I, mean, I can't remember the last time I saw the Voxel Brava, but can't talk about that, unfortunately, because it's probably got an engine we can't discuss. To the Morris Ital van. Wow. Yes, please, viewers, or 575. Uh, Birmingham plate, so very registered uh, by Austin Rover themselves at the time. 1984, very, very low mileage. Promotional vehicle. Wow, how on earth that has survived, I, I don't know. But there's actually a whole heritage fleet. I think there's a, a museum in Basingstoke that they're in. That is uh, that's pretty special. And then, ooh, let's get this right, uh, Bedford J2, I think this one, um, 74.75, Land Rover Series 3. I don't know actually, if the dash will tell me if it's a Series 3 or not. Yeah, it's a very early Series 3, it's a 71 then, in that case. Look at this big bed for picking up stuff. I wonder if it, if it still works to get a show to pick up cars. Mark II Escort Van, 1979 to 1980, which is um, looking pretty good. Looking very nice indeed. It's basically the same as a Mark I Escort, just the front end's been changed. Very early kind of minivan here. Uh, pressed steel grille, of course, Austin badged. Exposed door hinges, house style door handles. This one's got a locking passenger door, which is um, unusual. Often didn't have that. And then um, sliding windows. And actually, these are features that the minivans carried over right the way into the end of production in 1982. Very early Series 1 Land Rover. Look at this, all the sort of accessories in here. Still got the um, twin gear levers and things like that. This would be sort of 1950 or maybe even earlier than that. Wow, that's uh, pretty special. And they've got a Harley there. And an old, um, I don't know, it's a BSA over there probably. Right, it's not full over here, viewers, be careful. Oh, yes, please. Very nice. Jaguar Mark 10, 1964. Let's try not to fall over here. Right, uh, 3.8 Mark 10 automatic with electric windows. And more importantly, a beige leather interior with wood. Mm. 
Jack, you always do very well in terms of providing with beige leather interiors at shows for us. I um, wonder where that would be. So uh, then we can have a look at this, uh, this S-Type, 1999 to 2000, quite an early one actually. I um, wonder what engine this has got in it. Uh, it is just a V6, it could be a 2.5 or a, a 3 litre. Uh, I have actually driven one of these uh, on the channel. It was a 2000, it was a 3 litre V6. Oh, it's just 3 litre on the bonnet. What an idiot. There's a reason we call this Chambolic Shuffles beers. Um, this is a Daimler Sovereign, actually, 1968, I think, or 69, it could be, potentially. Yeah, Daimler Sovereign, very, very, very nice. On the left-hand side of it is the Jaguar version, the 420. These were like the S-Type, but we had a facelifted front end and the 4.2 engine. That one has the beige leather interior with wood. Most agreeable, I keep getting hit by uh, Union Jacks today, but to be reminded of my patriotism, I suppose. Very nice. Also very nice, we've got some uh, Toyota GT86s here, uh, all three of them rather than the Subaru BRZs. Well, it's got some Skylines over there, so we're going to have a look at those in a moment. Uh, that one is a uh, 2017 to 18, that one's just a, a uh, 17. Looks like they had a face at some stage. That, that colour's really, really sort of shining, particularly on these two. And the yellow, of course, is probably the appropriate colour for one of these. And full of minions, absolutely stuffed full of minions. I wonder if somebody painted the car yellow because of minions, or they just bought a yellow one. Probably the latter. Oh, actually, there's an information sheet about this one. We'll take a little look. It's a Jallo limited edition. Uh, it doesn't actually say what year it is, but uh, there we go. The uh, Nissan GTR Drivers Club. Excellent. I've driven a GTR on track, not too far from here actually, over at Aldershot. Unfortunately, I couldn't film it because I wasn't allowed to. Um, Litchfield Track Edition. I mean, 800 horsepower or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, the standard one of these with about 400 horsepower is. is good enough. Um, why you need some more, I don't quite know, but if you do, this is the car for you. Nice colour, this one. I think the GTRs have just been discontinued, or are about to be discontinued. They've been out for about 15 years. That's by far the best colour I've ever seen, though, in one of those. And we've got another one, so the Nismo edition. You get a bit more power. Some enormous wheels. This has got enormous wheels. Well, look at the interior whilst we're here. This one's open. Um, push ignition off. I don't fall over there, there so it's not a good idea. And then uh, this one here as well. Yeah, it was brilliant driving one of those on track. It was superb. They're such amazing machines, these. If that's uh, a uh, normal plate, then it's uh, 2011, but it could be a personal plate, of course. So we'll take a look at this one. This to me looks like an R32. Uh, what's on R? So 1997-1998 registration. Oh dear, I'm, it's a bit windy here, viewers. I do apologise. 650 horsepower, of course. And then another GTR here. It's even more modified than anything else. It's attracting a bit of attention. It's like something out of, uh, you know, if Need for Speed 2 was made today, it would be sort of colourless, wouldn't it? Need for Speed 2 was a very long time ago, I think 2004 that came out. Um, what's this? Yeah, number sky on GTR with rear wiper, second at the front end. Another R33. So we got some MX5s, this one looks like a brand new one been modified a little bit. This is the current generation of the ND. These have been out a long time though. They came out in 2015. So yeah, maybe a Mazda will replace at some point. Unfortunately, the, the sister car, the uh, 124 Spider from Fiat and Abarth, didn't do very well and that was just continued a few years ago. Yes, yeah, so it's a very early ND, this one, 2015, tuned by BBR. 
Who's that little chap down there? I forget his name. Yeah, it's definitely not standard, is it? Uh, Sky Active, I think. You have uh, the 1.5 or the 2 litre Sky Active engines in these. Then there's the NC. Um, I've driven one of these, a Sport Black, the one I drove, I think it was. This one is the Kuro edition. I don't know um, if that plate is uh, in relation to the age of the car, it's probably approximately right. Well, then my favourite specification dark green with a beige leather interior and wood. Fantastic. Someone's very kind of opened a bonnet for me. Uh, probably 1.8, I'd say I, the registration is probably about right for the year of the car, about 99, something like that. And we've got um, a couple of Mark 1s and we're NAs here. Brought one right to the UNOS, this one UK Market MX-5. Again, dark green with a beige leather interior and wood. This is the Glen Eagles, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Glen Eagles Special Edition. I think we saw this car actually over the weekend, so what's that, 90, 95, 96? Uh, this UNOS, uh, 92, 93. Go over here. Yeah, we saw this trailer over the weekend as well, didn't we, viewers? They brought this to the uh, Cranny Lion Show. As I remember, could have been the, the Camberley one. I was sort of merging the cars into one in my mind, unfortunately. Is this the California edition? Well, it is, yes, yeah, California edition. This is 1995, this one. Right, and then we. Um, another one of the current generation ones here. It's probably a good idea to actually get a baseball cap when you're having one of these so you don't get your head burnt. And um, yeah, NC, uh, this is the Venture Edition, the six speed gearbox, 2012. Yeah, we saw this always before, didn't we? Um, another NC here, it's only, got, it's only got the five speed. Both of those are facelifted once. Then um, 2005. NB Icon Edition, so right at the end of, of the Mark II production. By contrast here is a UNOS, it's not, not going to have a hard top. Um, 1991 on an H, with biscuit interior and speakers and headrests and things like that. It's funny things on headlamps. 1999 to 2000 NB. Dumbo, yeah, we saw Dumbo, didn't we? Did we see Dumbo at the weekend? He's not going to tell me, is he? He's dumb, but he can't speak. NC, uh, I think it's still the RC model 2010 with the folding hardtop. Yeah, I think we saw this again at the weekend. 2022. And D, again with the uh, retractable roof. Probably if it were me, I'd have one of those because I can't would have fiddle around with part with the soft tops. And yeah, another one of these icons. Come away from the MX-5 for a second. We've got some classic touring cars, touring car replicas here. Mondeo SI, uh, Paul Radisic. These are very nostalgic for a certain generation of person, aren't they, these? Uh, 90, 93, 94 and an L. Say at Toledo, I think this is. Oh, it is a, uh, a petrol engine, excellent. Uh, replica, this is 2995, 0756466195, 077200460015. See, it's the... Uh, Quite interesting spec pad, actually. Look at that sort of beige interior of things. Then a Mark 1 Focus. That looks very, very ready for combat, doesn't it? Very ready. This has got Looney Tunes cartoons on it. It's just a 
focus S at the Dover and ST, um, yes, it's as easy as could be. 2010 to 11 registration. It's 1.8. Um, MGZ, sorry, MGHS, I don't know what it's doing here. Um, not quite sure what tons of those phone viewers. Now I've got a red interior. Volvo 850 Estate. Is this a sort of T5 type thing? Yes, uh, yeah, replica touring car. And before you say, before you say yes, Mr. Hunter from Jeff buys cars. Indeed, yes, I know. Mark III Focus ST by Mount Tune. Hot Wheels uh, underscore SC underscore BTCC. And then a Mark One Focus. Sorry, Mark, Mark Six Fiesta ST. My gosh, I hardly recognised it. Look at this interior, everything's all been customised. Goodness gracious me, that's a lot of work, isn't it? An awful lot of work. Then um, another one of these uh, Mark 1 Mondeos. This is a gear, I think, by that grill. A 1995, uh, yes, a 24 valve, so it's a 2.5 V6 gear originally. It's not now. And then another Toledo. These are very cheap to pick up, these uh, Toledos. I think these are the Mark IIs. Um, interesting, 2003. Right, thank you so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like us, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again soon for more incorrect information.